Hello Humany and BFDI viewers. So in this video, I want to share a fun, silly little story from way back in the Object Show community's history. And I don't want the story to be lost to the sands of time, so I'm going to tell you. Imagine you're teleported back to the year 2013, and it's November. And back then, we had around 27,000 subscribers on our Jack and Jellify BFDI channel, which means over 97% of you subscribed now in 2021 weren't subscribed back then, so 97% of you don't know about this story, so I gotta tell you. Anyway, there's this other YouTube animator, Viva Reverie, I think they were previously known as I'm a Toon Link, that I've been a fan of for a while because they make crazy cool flash animations on the YouTubes, and they showed up in my recommendation feed sometime in 2012 or 13 because of their viral my Little Pony videos, and nowadays they make JoJo's Bizarre Adventure animation videos, which I think is super cool, um, but a lot of it is also just like silly goofing off on the internet. Like obviously you can post pony videos that wouldn't show up on TV because they're just so silly. Anyway, I'm going to play this one that went viral, and if you're an OG in the Object Show community, you know exactly what this is. This is super familiar. Okay, wait, let me restart. Anyway. I think this is their, what do you call it, pony sona? Basically talking about how spicy maracha food is, and it's so spicy their mouth is on fire, and I think that original audio comes from some old kids show. So this is sort of like TikTok before TikTok, where you take someone at some other random audio from, like, media, like, 20 years ago, and you refresh it and you animate something new to it. But it is objectively very catchy. And like there's a chorus of people singing in the background. It's just so cute, so adorable, and I love it. And obviously it went viral back then. Right now it has 3 million views, and I think it was their most viewed video at the time. Um, but it was fully contained within the My Little Pony fandom. BFDI had nothing to do with it, right? Well, up and okay. Because it got so popular, other people who animated started creating parodies of Very Hot, and at the beginning, those parodies just came from other people in the MLP fandom. Like, this is just another pony video, but in 3D now. So maybe it's made with Blender. Also, obviously, I'm not going to play through every single one, so if you want to watch them, go to the link in the description. And also, I don't even know if playing the music is going to get me copyright claimed, but hopefully not. Um, so it starts out with in the MLP fandom, and there's one with cats, I assume. Oh, but it's been privated, so I can't see anymore. But it's sort of... Equestria Girls is also My Little Pony. And I want to point out that at the time, in 2013, we had way fewer subscribers or any notability compared to Viva Reverie. So I thought like we were just a small fish in a huge pond. But then... About 10 videos down, you know, we're still getting non-BFDI videos, but the 11th video is BFDI. What is that? So one of the OGs, one of the, the most uh, prominent members of the Object Show community, CatYJ98, made this animation of his OC, Pistachio, singing the song with the spicy pepper. And I think this was the first time that the world of BFDI and the OSC got involved with Viva Reverie's Very Hot video, but after that, they just kept flooding in. So, okay, after BFDI, it, it goes back to some other fandom, which is Minecraft. And then it kind of, like, just randomly goes towards, like, different and different things. But then we get Inanimate Insanity. Who made this one? Oh, it's unavailable, so I'm not sure who. Um... And then we get Object Overload, which is made by Niall from Zany Leaves. So Niall is like still a super prominent member right now because, because you know, he voices two from Teapot, but he also was the runner of Troc, and he just makes Object Overload as well. So, you know, he's super well known, is super talented as an animator, but he also contributed to the OSC getting its feet wet in this very hot fad, like literally very hot fad. And it has over 1.7 million views, so like that's like half of, of this, so that's pretty pretty good. Um, but what I want to point out is like, if you know about BFDI and you watch the show and you watch other object shows, this makes sense to you because like you know 
what it means to have these like black dot uh, face eyes and, and like black stick limbs on random objects. That's an object show. But imagine if you're not in the fandom and you start seeing all these other ones show up. Color battle. Oh, that one's been privated. Um, to you, like these all start to look like clones of each other. Like you're not sure where they're coming from. Like, okay. At this point, Epic Land, that's, this is the fourth one from the OSC. <laughs> Interesting. I guess it's like subtly BFDI, but I can't quite tell. But you know, I appreciate the enthusiasm. But then by uh, this one, this is the fifth object show. And if you're not in the BFDI fandom, it just looks like you get the same black face, the black, no, not, not black face, black dot eyes and like face and black stick arms on random objects. It seems totally random. Did it come from a content farm? Did it come from a like weird algorithm? Did it come from kids in sweatshops? Like we have no idea. Obviously it came from you guys, you know, the enthusiastic animators. But it's so random, right? Like what's the explanation? So this one is made by Ferrock and it's clashed within items. And it's 2013, that's seven years ago, of course, because they all, th this was a fad that lasted for like a couple months, so it's all gonna happen within the span of late 2013. This is a uh, challenge to win is very hot from 100 DCX, one of the OGs as well. Oh my God, this is the most extreme fire <laughs> that I've seen so far. Like, very aggressive burning, <laughs> oh my God. Anyway, you can see that like Viva Reverie has no idea what's going on. Like five, why are there are five of these now? I don't even, six, 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 that's a seven, I can't even. Um, so I just think it's funny that like, you know, we came in numbers, you know, we were powerful. And I think this was like the first time I sort of recognized that the object show community was big. Well, not big, but um, like, you know, if you guys wanted to show enthusiasm for something, you just came gung-ho, super powerful. Um, and so this is the seventh one, eighth, ninth, tenth, you guessed right. Object Mayhem, this is from TT Guy, another BFB animator. And it has over a million views as well, so... Um, just imagine like ten things that almost look like clones from each other, but all from different YouTubers just coming out, you know, making parodies of your video. It's just so fascinating, right? Like, where are they coming from? So anyway, okay, so there's there's 10 of these. Okay, there's 11 of these. So Viva said, I don't know about you, I don't, but I don't think we'll be hearing from anything else besides black arms, legs, black arms and legs and dot eyes on random objects anymore. Okay, so that, that was this one. Misunderstood. So this one's Object Havoc by In Interstellar Lizard, who's another BFB animator. So clearly a lot of ties, like a lot of roots connect everyone together. I love the iPod. That's a throwback. And I love the buckets. Is this an iPod shuffle? I, I forget what it was called. Tomorrow in my butt. I know that's not kid friendly. I mean, kids, you know you, you have a butt. Like that's not a secret. Everyone has a butt. Anyway, um, okay. So after 11 in a row of just object shows, then it goes back to other fandoms. So we got minions. Oh great, minions. People, Powerpuff Girls, something, Gmod. And then it goes back to object shows, I'm guessing because Viva says, uh, I, uh, hmm, I think they're playing some game. And then this one is re removed, right? Yes, removed. Um, I give zero craps that this isn't animation deserves. Okay, this is just not in the BFG fan, but it's unavailable. Yeah, you know, if, a video, if, if this happened seven years ago, you know, a lot of channels will get, like, will, you know, you won't be able to access their content anymore. But here's number 12, 13, 14. So here's Brawl of the Objects. We got a hot dog. So this is not actually by Anko6, but it's by Sleep Mass R. And then there's Next Top Thingy is very hot with a cactus, and then an unavailable video. Um, so in total, at least 15 videos were recognized by Viva, but I'm sure there are lots more that just didn't make it on this list. And YouTube descriptions have a maximum length that they can be. I think that's around 5,000 characters. So obviously, once this filled up, you know, Viva Reverie couldn't couldn't add anymore, and that's totally fine. Um, mice. Yeah. Anyway, people also made 10-hour loops of their original animation, which is, like, really funny. 
because when any video gets to a certain level of popularity, someone is bound to make a 10 hour loop of it. It's happened to my own videos even. And so the fact that this exists, I think is really funny and, and like is a testament to internet, internet culture. Anyway, um, the rest of these are just like um, fan art and links. So that's all that really fit in the maximum description. But I think this is just a really cool thing to reminisce about. So yes, it has been a very long time since the fad happened. And I wanted to share it in case like if YouTube goes, well, if YouTube goes down, this video would also, this like this actual human video would also disappear. But this is just a way of archiving the past, making sure we don't forget if like Viva Reverie's channel gets deleted, which I hope doesn't happen, but if it did, then like you still have like evidence that it existed at some point. Um, but I just think this was the very first time I realized that, oh my gosh, there's a lot of passionate animators in my community now. Because in 2011 and 2012, I had my eyes super glued to the BFDI fandom. I was like paying attention to every new object show that was coming out, which is why I knew about Inanimate Insanity, Fight for Feline Funds, Animation Island, Object Mayhem, Object Universe, as soon as they came out. And I knew how many, you know, BFDI spin-offs there were. But by 2013, I entered my junior year of high school, and I got so busy with AP classes and honors classes, and maybe I also just grew up as a person, so I stopped checking YouTube as often, and so I kind of forgot, or I wasn't even aware that even more object shows were coming, off, coming out. So this was just a very nice, refreshing reminder that, hey, Carrie, there's at least 15 object shows now, and like most of them you're not even aware they exist, but here they are, and you should be proud that like they're really engaging with a different side of the internet, a different corner. We're connecting two nodes together. And I think it was just a good reminder of that. And it also helped me show like help show to me that I think the engagement level of BFDI is so much higher than the rest of the internet. And by that I mean if you find okay, I don't want to like toot my own horn and I don't want to make sweeping generalizations, but I feel like most YouTubers, if you find them with 27,000 subscribers or so, it would be hard to ask them to like find like 15 people or more to like willingly animate a full on show that's like a derivative of your show in animation software like Flash and then, you know, swamp another YouTuber with their reaction videos. Like, I just feel like, you know, that happens with big, big YouTubers, but a YouTuber like a, a mid to small size YouTuber like us back then. It doesn't really happen unless you guys are just super passionate and super into it. Like, your life is animation, and it was. So I, I want to say thank you. And also, if you're newer here, you know, any of the 970,000 who subscribed after, obviously, you could still make a very hot object show parody if you wanted to. I'll put the links to everything in the description. But you are seven years late, so I feel like, like maybe it's not as fun because you're not really catching the wave and the excitement that happened back then. Um, but of course you're free to, and um, yeah. So I, I like I want to know to everyone who showed up later. Did did you know that this happened? Like I, I wonder, does the object show old school people try to like educate or inform the new school people about its history, or is it just like you you're only aware of what you come across after you join? Like I have no idea. So I wanted to share this, and one last thing I want to say is sometimes I think about what would an OSC Rewind look like? So you know how YouTube Rewind, they have one every year, and obviously they're very disliked, so um, we're not gonna try to create a clone of that, but I want, and I'm not, I'm not ever gonna promise or hope to create an OSC Rewind, but if there was like a video where we tried to, you know, include a compilation of every sort of fad that happened across the 12 year period, I think this would deserve at least a five second segment of that. Because um, for me, again, it, it was like a, an awakening, a reminder that like these people are here, um, but also just like, it was really fun and silly and yeah. Okay, well, I think that's all I have to say for this video. Thanks for watching. Links are in the description, of course. If, if I have any other thoughts, I'll add them in the description as well. And I will see you later. Bye, human e viewers. Bye, 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 bye.